11.30. I say good morning to the saints who are here. Good morning to the saints that are watching us via live web streaming. We are excited and delighted to have this opportunity. And you know, before we do anything, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, <clears throat> for the opportunity of being able to break this bread of life, which will continue to enrich, empower, guide, and direct us. Allow us to see the potential that exists within us, the purpose that you have called us to, Lord, and allowing us to continue to press our way through. And Lord, right now, we just ask you to help us to give you our undivided attention, Lord, because we don't want to miss one second, one drop of what you have for us. And Lord, we want to truly be filled to overflowing so that we truly can live a life that is glorifying to you. And we're thanking you for this opportunity that you've given us this day. We love you and thank you, Lord, in the mighty matchless name of Jesus Christ, our blessed and holy Savior name, we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> From this day forward, I will no longer focus on the obstacles, but on the opportunities. I will no longer stand in my own way, but allow God to make the impossible happen in my life. I will stop doubting myself and realize I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And I will move in the direction that God has taken me to make it happen because I am God's investment and I am all in. Hard hats, shovels, boots, gloves, goggles, flashlights, lithium batteries. We done limbered up, y'all, because we're getting ready to dig. And what I want us to see and understand and realize that last week a challenge was presented to us as we look at the purpose, which is step two in the process. And we're looking at the purpose. And as we're looking at the purpose and last week, we started here in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, starting at verse number one. We made our way to verse eight, but we have to fully explain from six as we go to going back down and, and where we left off yesterday is have we attempted to control God? Have we attempted to shut a door that the Lord has opened? You see, my brothers and sisters, we have to know for a fact, we cannot, we will not, and it's not possible for us to control God. So we have to see and understand Whatever God is equipping us to do, whatever God is presenting before us to have and to move forward with, even when we feel unworthy, because truth be told, we are unworthy. And even though we feel that way, but God is still presenting this to us through his grace and his mercy and is left up to us to embrace it, because if we don't embrace it, we're going to go now and look at this in more detail because we started looking at this at the end of our class. And what I want us to do is focus right now on verses six to eight. And I'm going to ask you to please follow along as I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. And it says, starting at verse number six, he came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, you do not know now what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Wow. We're seeing, because we talked about it last week, how Peter raised the question to Jesus. You know, you're going to wash my feet? And Jesus told him, yeah, I got to wash my feet. And then he responds, bro, I don't care what you say. You ain't never. You ain't never, you ain't never <laughs> going to wash my feet. And, and I want us to understand the mindset of Peter. And where is Peter coming from in this mindset? Well, the way Peter is coming from in this mindset, y'all, and we talked about this, but, but, but I, I want us to see Peter felt unworthy for these holy hands to touch his dirty feet. He felt unworthy. Now, if, if we can, not if we can, but we are going to get a little deep with this. You see, during that time, before Jesus stepped into this earth, this realm that we're in, they had what was called a temple. 
that they went to when they worshiped. And the temple had multiple courts. You had the outer court for the Gentiles. You had the next court, which is the women's court. Then you had the, where the Israelite men went. And then you had the inner court where all of the priests went. And behind, and then where the priests went, there was another court. That was where the holies of holies was. And the only person who went inside the holies of holies was the high priest. And he only went once a year. And whenever he went in, he was clothed in his proper robes and, and all the stuff he had on. And they tied a rope around him. So while he was in there, if he did something that truly was upsetting to God or defiled what he was supposed to do and God struck him dead, they knew they couldn't go in and get him because that was the holies of holies. So they put the rope on him so they could drag him out. Why did they do that? Because they felt that they were not worthy or they were unworthy to enter in the holies of holies. So in understanding that mindset from how Peter sees that, how Peter sees Jesus as being the holies of holies and, and to allow something that holy to allow those blessed hands who are holy to touch my dirty feet wasn't going to happen. Peter was fighting it. So, so I want us to understand why Peter was fighting it. He wasn't fighting, he was fighting it not because of anything about Jesus. He was fighting it because he thought he was incapable of receiving such a blessing from Jesus. So he saw himself having, being able to enter into the holy of holies. And I can't go into the holies of holies because I am unworthy. So, so, so that being the case, what has happened? Peter, in so many ways, is doing this, y'all. Woo! What's Peter doing, y'all? Blocking his blessings because he feels what? Unworthy. Is, are we any different today? Are we any different today? Because of the fact that we see what God wants to do. We see what God is showing us what he wants us to do. We see how the Lord is opening up doors for us. We're seeing how he wants us to do certain things. But we don't want to step in or do it because we feel that that's too holy for us. So in so many ways, we want to tell the Lord, never will that be me because I am unworthy. But the reality is, who is it? Who isn't unworthy? The only one who isn't unworthy, his name is what? Jesus. And, and, and Jesus had to do what he, what he was capable of doing because he was the only one worthy of doing it so that we would no longer feel unworthy, but feel this, y'all. You and I got to understand something. We have been this. That's a C, not an E. We have been accepted. How did God accept us, y'all? Oh, oh, oh. Mm, mm, mm. How has God done? How has God accepted us? Just the way you are. The Lord did what he did for us so that you and I can be what? Accepted and no longer feel what? Unworthy. Accepted. You see, because of this, the Lord has opened a door. And because we feel we are unworthy, we are trying to shut what we didn't open. We're trying to make a decision on what we think we are able or unable to do because of the fact that we are what? Unworthy. We are not deserving of the blessings that God is giving us. None of us are. But God has created an opportunity so that you and I can be what? Accepted by allowing holy hands to wash our dirty feet. Holy hands wash our dirty feet. Peter was just so adamant. Lord, you will never wash my feet. You see, being unworthy Oh, can cause us to have this, even though that's not the intent. 
But being unworthy causes us to be this, proud. Now, I got to explain that. You see, when you feel, feel you are unworthy of something, and you are fighting against what God is telling you, I still want to give you. You telling me you are too proud to receive a blessing? Because you are being unworthy, you are too proud to receive what God has for you? From the flip side, when we see of somebody who, you know, they're so proud, we're seeing it from an arrogant perspective. Peter is, is, is taking this proud to a different perspective because of the fact that I'm too proud because I know I'm not worthy that there's just some places I'm not going to go. And if you're doing that, you're blocking blessings. You see, so, so whenever we see a proud scenario, we, we're thinking about somebody who is so arrogant. But it's also the same perspective. They're just too proud. Because I just know I, I am not, I am not capable of receiving something this good. So I want to shut the door on you. Because of how I had lived, lived, not how I am living, but I want to shut the door because of how I have lived. But you got to understand, God isn't concerned about how you have lived because he knew the way you lived was causing you to live a life that was unworthy to come into the presence of God. You see, but Jesus stepped down through 42 generations. Jesus left the heavenly to come down to a place like this. So that's letting us understand that the Lord is the one who is showing us that it ain't about being proud. It's about being humble. Some folk can't receive a blessing because they're just too proud. You're broke and you ain't got enough money to put enough food on the table and somebody hands you a $30, somebody hands you $30 and say, don't worry about it, just go, ah, I don't need your money. What you think I'm, I ain't, I ain't have my hand out for it. I know you got them babies at home and all you got is, a, is about two boxes of cereal and a half a gallon of milk. I'm not trying to do anything other than help you. So when we talk about some folk being too proud, they're already so broke and can't get to where they need to be, but they're not willing to accept the blessings. They're blocking blessings even though they're unworthy. They know they're unworthy, but somebody is trying to help you, but they're too proud to receive the blessings. Oh, my goodness. You see, what we're seeing here is Peter just couldn't see it. Why? Jesus, you're too holy. You're too good to do such a good thing for me. But Jesus was doing what he was doing to remove us from being feeling what? Unworthy and recognize that we're being what? Accepted. But we have to get to the point where we know we're accepting. And even as we embrace and receive the blessings from God, we won't flip and also become somebody who walks around as though they are proud. Oof. See how proud works in both perspectives? We always want to think of proud, you know, somebody being real proud because they got so much stuff. Some folk of us are just going to be proud because of the fact that, you know, I'm, I can't accept that for whatever reason. So, so what we're seeing that is happening here in verse number six, as we went through it, Peter is struggling. You're going to wash my feet. Jesus answered, you don't know, right? He tells him again, you don't know what I'm doing, but later you will understand. Again, remember I talked about last week, he just, he, he did not want to accept that answer. So since he didn't want to accept that answer, he told Jesus, you ain't going to ever wash my feet. Never, ever, ever, never, ever. Now, the Lord has Jesus, the Lord, has Peter at the threshold of the door. Now that he has him at the threshold of the door, what the Lord is going to do is tell him something. Let, can, can, can I go and show you what I'm, talking, what I'm talking about? Jesus answered him, unless I wash you, you have no share in me. The Lord has Peter at the threshold of the door. 
And he says, you know what? If, if, you, if, if, you, if you stuck on never, go on and grab the handle and slam the door because then you really won't be, you will not be allowed in. So if, if you don't allow me, if you don't accept what I'm about to do for you because you're stuck on being unworthy and through being unworthy, you have now gained, you have now become proud and saying, I can't, I cannot receive this from you, Jesus. I just can't. Then I'm telling you, if you don't let me do this, go on and close the door. Because I can't go on, you can't go nowhere with me. You can't share. Because look at what it, how Jesus ends that. Jesus said to him, he says again, you will never wash my feet, Jesus answers, unless I wash you. You have no share with me. Unless I wash you, you have no share in me. You know what else we're seeing here, y'all? Baptism. Woo. You see, we are Baptists, which means is that it's a believer's faith, which means that we believe Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And we believe that one of the things that all of us must be as Baptists is what? Baptized. So, so the baptism is a necessity for those who say they accept Christ because it's an outward showing of a what? Inward change. See, I, I know I'm not worthy for God to clean me and heal me, but he did what he did because he loved me. So in order for me to recognize the love he has for me, I can't shut the door, but I got to go and open the door. I mean, go through the door that's been open for me already, which means is that when I'm at the threshold, I have to be somebody who was willing to accept what God has for me. And if I'm willing to accept what God has for me, then I just what? Step in. Why is that made possible? Because God says what? I'm accepted. Jesus is letting me know and letting you know we're no longer taught to be considering and calling ourselves unworthy because I already know you're not worthy. Because if you were worthy, then I wouldn't have to come. I came because you are unworthy. And since you are unworthy, I'm letting you know through my actions, you will be accepted. And the way that you show that you have been accepted is that you and I will be will go through the what baptism or be baptized. So what Jesus is saying. If, if this doesn't happen, you have no share in me. So this is also a deeper meaning. When we look at this washing of feet, a deeper meaning that if when we come to Jesus and we truly are, are professing our faith and showing the outward change and we're going to we all of us going to get what dipped. And come back up. It's a washing. Which is just which is the outward showing of an inward change. It's a washing. So if we're accepting Jesus, yes, you're not worthy. But if you accept him, he doesn't want you to focus on being unworthy and focusing on being too proud to allow the Lord to bless you. There are some folk who have accepted Christ and praise God for what he's done because they recognize that they've done some stuff they ain't too proud about. But God is still opening his arms and puts them at the threshold, but it's still left up to all of us to step in. Don't be too proud to step in. Are you too proud to let God bless you? Something to think about. Because you're at the threshold of the door. Some of us have come through the door because we got baptized. But all we did was step in, but we don't want to go any further because of the fact that, Lord, you can't use me to do that. Do you know my past? Do you know my history? Do you know what I don't have? Do you know what I didn't do? So how are you going to call me to do something like this? Because he's God. And if we are willing to put our trust in God, God will do the unthinkable. God will make the impossible possible. Our God, our Lord and Savior has done great things and continuing to do great things in us. It's only left up to us to truly accept. And, and once we've accepted what God has done for us, he has, has accepted us just the way we are. And as he's accepted us just the way we are, when you come to Jesus, you ain't going to stay that way. Because why? Because the Lord knew, knows you can't fix yourself. So he has to accept you just the way you are. And once he accepts you just the way you are, you will not stay that way. 
See, the, ba the baptism shows that you are ready for this, y'all. The baptism shows that you're ready for the what? Transformation. So after Jesus made this statement to Peter, he said it, didn't yell it at him, didn't, didn't get frustrated with him. He just said to him very simply, unless I wash you, you have no share in me. Now, the Lord says, you have an ultimatum. You're going to come through the door or you're going to reach across and grab the door and close it. It's up to you now. But I'm just telling you plain and simple, right? Now, check out what Peter says, and this is where we get this last part from. Simon Peter says to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. So Peter, <laughs> y'all see Peter, I tell you, Peter, you, you can always expect the unexpected from Peter. He done went from one extreme to the other because he says, I'm not going to shut the door on my blessings. Y'all see that, right? He said, I ain't going to shut the door on my blessings. But Lord, if you're going to wash my feet, wash my head, just, just, just wash me. Isn't that what he says here? Am I making this up? Right? He, he, look, look at what he says. Simon Peter says, Lord, not my feet only, but also my head and, and my, my, my hands and my head. So, so what Peter is saying, you see how he done went and he done did a 180 degree turn. He done went from never to Lord do it all. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? He went from never to Lord do it all. Not just my feet, but my hands and my head. Do it all, Lord. Because I want you to know, I'm not shutting the door on my blessings. I'm not going to be too proud in my brokenness because I don't feel worthy. But Lord, you are doing this so that I can be accepted. And since I recognize what you are doing now, you're not doing it for no other reason but for me to embrace you and who you are and just let you have your way in my life. Have your way in me, Lord. This is what Peter is saying. Have your way in me, Lord. Not just the feet, but the hands and the head. Just wash me. But, but look at how Jesus responds. Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except his feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. Woo! Peter, everything is made available to you. You're clean. But in order for you to embrace me in the totality of who I am so that I can anoint you and empower you to do the great thing, you have to allow this to happen. You have to know that I have your best interests at heart. You see, my brothers and sisters, let me help you understand this. Are you unworthy? Yes. Jesus doesn't want us to be too proud to embrace what he has for us. So he has created the opportunity for us to be accepted. And once we receive what, once we allow ourselves to be, we are received by him just as we are, we now are baptized. And through the baptism, we are going through the what? Transformation. And the whole purpose of the transformation is so that we transition from being a sinner to a saint. From a sinner to a saint. You see, my brothers and sisters, the reality about Christianity is that we have folk in church who are truly stifling their ability to flourish in ministry. Because even though I know I'm accepted, I still don't feel, I, am, I feel that I'm unworthy for what the ministry is asking me to do. God is the one who has opened the door for your ministry. And since God has opened the door for your ministry, why are you still standing at the threshold and saying, well, God, well, God, ah. you know you ain't going to grab the door and close it. Because matter of fact, you know you didn't open it, so how are you going to close it? See, the door never closes. What happens is we walk away from the door. Because the door that God opens, no man can shut. 
But the Lord, when he shuts a door, that door is shut. But the Lord didn't come to shut doors for us. He came to shut the door of sin dominating us. But he wants us to focus more on the door he's open to allow him to transform us. You see, God will always bring attention to the positive and will not overemphasize the negative. Because God wants us to see the positiveness of who he is in our lives. It's important for you and I to recognize and to realize how for where have we come and where are we going? Because we serve a God who is a God of action. Look at the world around us. Every day the sun shines somewhere. And we thank God for those days that it rained because we know we like to get a little rain to help cool us off because it's been as it's been, as I say, right hot lately. But God is a God of action. He's always doing something. He's always moving. He's always providing. The rivers are always flowing. The wind is always blowing. The sun shines. The clouds come. The, the, the darkness comes at night. It, God is always moving. He's doing. He's doing. He's doing. God never slumbers nor sleeps. But he recognizes that we got to recharge our batteries. But at the same time, the one thing you and I have to understand is this. If you have been through the transformation then the one thing that should not happen is that you don't focus on being unworthy. You focus on being accepted. You hear what I say? When you truly uh, have, have dealt with the transformation and excited about the transformation God is doing with you, you will not focus on being unworthy. You will focus on being accepted. And when you focus on being accepted, there's a whole different mindset you take on. You know why? Because, God, I can't believe you want me to do that. But, Lord, if you open the door, I got to go through it. Because when I am truly somebody who is transformed and I have dealt with the transformation, the one thing that dominates my life now is faith. Because without faith, it is impossible to please God. We, we've talked about this a lot. But when you know that through the baptism that you've had, you've now have dealt with the transformation. And in order for you to truly embrace the transformation from stepping from being a sinner to a saint, you have to step out on because God wants us to move by. In order for us to do things, we have to believe and have what? Can you see it right now? No, but I have to believe it's going to happen. You see, that's what this transformation is all about. This transformation is taking the necessary steps for we walk. You see, walk. Walking means that you're doing something which requires movement, which requires action. For we walk by faith. We don't sit by faith. We walk by faith, which means that we are to be a people who are always on the move. It ain't that we got ADHD. It's understanding that I serve a God who's always got something else he wants me to do. And as long as I'm living, I'm going to be doing what God has called me to do. So, so it don't matter how, how, how seasoned you become. What matters is that God has blessed you to be seasoned. And since you are seasoned, he still hasn't given up on you, but he still got work for you to do. You might kick. Can't kick as high as you used to. Might can't run like you used to, but you can still walk by faith. That never changes. No matter how old or how young, it never changes. The people of God got to be a people that walk by faith. Now, there's something else we have to see here. Because Jesus said to him again in verse 10, he says, Jesus said to him, one who has bathed does not need to wash except his feet. You've already been bathed. You've already been baptized. And as you live this life, every now and then you're going to make some mistakes. And as you live this life, every now and then you're going to step in somewhere you don't need to step. 
And when you do something that you don't need to do, what should we do? We should confess our sins because God is faithful and just and will forgive us of all unrighteousness. You see, so you ain't got to go through the whole baptismal process again because you've already been transformed. But even during your transformation, the enemy is still trying to trip you up and make you make mistakes. And when you make a mistake, you got to confess it so that it doesn't grab a hold of you. Because the one thing you can't forget, let me just show you the one thing you can't forget. One who has bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is entirely what? He's entirely what? He's entirely what? Clean. Clean. You have been cleansed through the blood of Jesus. You've been baptized so that folk, so that you are being a witness to people of, I'm not what I used to be. Because through the baptism, I'm showing an outward change. I mean, I'm showing you outwardly what the inward change has happened. The transformation has already begun in my life. And I will move forward from this day forward. I will walk by. You see it? You're clean. You're clean. You're clean. But as you live this life, Knowing you're clean. Every now and then I might make a mistake. Confess it, move on. Right? Now, now look at us what he says here. And you are clean, though not all of you. Whoo. Ah. Oh. You see, can I can I can I can I get deep with you? You sure? You sure I can get deep with you? Jesus blesses those who wouldn't dare even tell him thank you. But they are blessed because they're in the same presence with you. They happen to be in the same place with you. But at the same time, there are some things they will not receive because they are perpetrating, but they're not believing. People should not be in church perpetrating because of the fact that, check this out, the 11 disciples didn't know the one that was going to betray Jesus because in their presence, they thought all 12 of them were all on the same page. But everybody who was there was not moving by Mm. But there was one who was perpetrating and just going along with the crowd and figured he can go along with the flow because of the fact that he had now become displeased at what Jesus was doing. So he was going to do his best to silence him. So in so many ways, Judas Iscariot was trying to control the Lord. And when he couldn't control the Lord, he's going to shut the door on the Lord and thought he's going to bring him to an end. I'm going to go over to that church and show them what they need to do because they ain't doing things right over there. I'm going to show them. <laughs> really? You're going to show them. <clears throat> Jesus said the gates of hell shall not prevail against this church. And if we're all here and we're not here for Jesus, we're perpetrating. I'm going to let that sink in. The Lord wants us to be truly authentic authentic in our ministry, recognizing the church is filled with a lot of people. All the people in God's house had to go through the transformation. And if you've gone through the transformation, there's a certain level or a certain place you won't move from. Because you're not going to deviate because of the fact that you've been through the transformation and you're walking by faith. You understand that no matter what goes on, that you recognize and understand who is in control. God. And if I allow God to stay in control, that I know that I am what? Clean. 
I'm healed, delivered, and set free. I'm anointed, I'm appointed. I am truly doing God's will, and God is blessing not just me, but he's blessing the place where I worship. He's blessing those who I worship with. He's blessing me wherever I go and allowing me to be a blessing to others and allow others to be a blessing to me. You see, that's what it's all about when, this, when you understand the transformation that God has done for you. It's not just all what you can do for others. It's what you also see others doing for you. And when we come together, we are not separate but we are one body in Christ because we are all in this. You see, and that's what ministry is all about. But Jesus here is pointing out the eyesore. Everybody here ain't right. Is that what he's saying? Is that pretty much what he's saying? Everybody here ain't right. Everybody here is not clean. Right? He said, not all of you. Right? For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason, he said, not all of you are clean. A perpetrator is in the midst, waiting for the opportunity to try to throw a wrench in what God has done. Trying to throw a wrench into the blessings, trying to muddy the waters. But the one thing that we have to remember who is in control? God. Folk might fool me. <laughs> Folk might fool you. We might be fooling one another, but we will not fool God. So no matter what, you think you're getting over? No. So what is this telling us thus far? God knows you. God knows me. God knows us all. So let us do the best that we can to not to be not a part of the not all of you. <laughs> let us do the best that we can to not be a part of that not all of you crew. Let us be those who have been what? Transformed and who are walking by because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and our Savior. So that I don't have to think about being unworthy anymore. You follow with me? You see, you see, see so, so now that he's gotten everybody, because there's always going to be a few that take a little longer to catch on. There will be some folk who was going to embrace it. Because when you look at it, the 10 who were going to be left and one who was the deceiver or the, who was going to betray Jesus, all of them immediately accepted what Jesus was doing for them. But Peter was the one who always does the unexpected. And he had to have that conversation. And the Lord had to check him and put him in a place to where he fully understood. And now that he understands, he can move forward. Now, now let's go and look at this next piece that took place, right? Starting at verse 12. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, do you know what I have done? To you. Whew. You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done for you. Uh-oh. Ah. Again, y'all. Oh, the Lord always creates a moment to teach. The Lord creates moments to grow us. 
But the question is, can you stand to grow? Because if you can stand to grow, then you're definitely going to be blessed in the process. When you understand that Jesus now is here bringing the purpose home. You know why he's bringing his purpose home? Because I shared with you that many believe that this act that Jesus did came from Luke chapter 22, verse 24, where they were trying to, to create a hierarchy amongst themselves or who is to lead and who is the one who should be in a position of leadership and who, who deserves this role and so on and so forth. But Jesus is saying, those of you who want to lead folk, you have to be willing to serve them in whatever capacity that is necessary. And he used an example to do this because the slave in the house who had the lowest position was the slave who washed the feet of the guests coming in the house. And that's all they did. And no slave in any household wanted this job. It was the lowest of lows. But Jesus said, if you, you call me teacher and you call me Lord, and you are correct in doing that. But as your teacher and as your Lord, I don't want you to ever forget as you go through this transformation and you are elevated, don't ever forget you are called to serve. And as you serve, you have to be willing to meet people wherever they are. Because if you think you're so high up that you can't go down to meet folk, then what kind of servant are you for me? What kind of leader are you for me? He said, because as I've done this for you, what does he say? You ought to do it for one another. So don't ever think there's, two t there's any task that's beneath you. If you want to be a leader, Yes, everybody has jobs and stuff that they do. But what happens when the time comes when ain't nobody around to do it but you? On that particular moment, you do what you need to do as a leader. Why? Because as a leader, you are a servant. So don't ever lose sight of what does it mean to lead. You are to lead by serving. Serving. You see, everything that we do, y'all, as the children of King of King and Lord of Lords, everything that we do requires this. Can't get away from it. Actions. If I, if I say I'm the pastor and I'm, and I'm going to pastor, then I got to be willing to teach. I got to be willing to preach. I got to be willing to serve the people of God. I got to be willing to meet you where you are. And as you've heard me say several times and said it on Sundays, ministry is something that it doesn't happen on our convenience. Ministry at times comes at inconvenient times. But if you're going to truly be a servant, you serve. You do what you have to do when you have to do it. And Jesus was sharing with his disciples. If you turn your nose up to washing somebody else's feet, then you're not ready to be the teacher that I want you to be. If sweeping the floor is something that causes you to frown upon and I ain't sweeping no floor, then are you really ready to lead? You see, a leader, a true leader, is willing to serve in whatever capacity they have to do at any given time. That's for he or she. It doesn't matter if you're going to lead. You see, the Lord 
says this in verse 15. For I have set you an example that you also should do as I have done to you. I set an example. Do you realize that Jesus came to show us the way, the truth, and the life? No one comes to the Father except through the Son. So that's something that we have to ponder about. That's something we have to think about. That's something which challenges us. Now, let's look at these last two verses, 16 and 17. He says, very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. If you know these things, isn't that what he said? What happens? You are blessed if you what? Do them. If you truly going to be who God is calling you to be, you, we have to let Jesus' example be a part of who we are. And as we move forward in doing what we're called to do, then you understand there's nothing too great, nothing too small. Very truly, in verse 16, and very truly I tell you, servants are not greater than their masters, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. So, Jesus is saying, he set the example. We saw that, right? If this is the example he set, it's now left up to us to abide by and follow his what? Example. And if we're not going to follow the example, because of the fact that we felt that I'm too good to do something like that. Mm. Then what are we doing? Blocking blessings. Or blocking our blessings. Blocking our blessings. Because he says in 17, if you know these things, you, you are blessed if you do them. If you know these things. How many of us know better, but if we choose not to do better, then we can't be blessed. When you know better and you don't do better, then you're not blessed. Am I making this up? It's right here. You are blessed if you do them. You are blessed. See, you're not blessed for what you know. You're blessed by what you do. I'm going to let that sink in. Do I need to say it one more time? You're not blessed because of what you know. You are blessed by what you do. I don't have no space. To, I could write it, but you understand it. I want you to write it so you, you can write it so that you can see it. You're not blessed by what you know. You are blessed by what you do. We serve a God of what? So, don't talk about it. Because <laughs> everybody can talk about it. Anybody can quote scripture. Anybody can tell you all the stuff that's in the Bible. But the thing is, what do I see you doing based on what you're saying? Because a lot of folk can say a lot of good stuff. But are they living the good stuff they're saying? Bottom line, y'all. You see, the Lord doesn't want his people. One, to be ignorant. He doesn't want us to be ignorant. So God wants us to be a people that what? No. The Lord doesn't want us to be stagnant. Why? Because when you look at Jesus' ministry, he was always on the move. I must work the works while it is day. Because nighttime's coming when what? No one can work. So what is the Lord telling us? You have to be, you're only blessed because you do what you know. And the thing is, if you know better, but you don't do better, that means you cannot be blessed. It's not what I think. It's not what you think. It's about what did the Lord say? And we've just read what the Lord 
has said. And, and the one thing that, that, that you and I have to realize and understand as we have made our way through these verses is that the Lord is our example. You see, what messes up a lot of folk in church is we compare ourselves against other folk in church. And we size ourselves up to them and say, oh, I know I'm doing more than them. Wrong comparison. If you want to see where you are and what you're doing, you let Jesus be your example. Because he's the only one who truly can bless us. And he is blessing us. So if you're going to compare yourself to what others are doing, Start reading the word of God and compare what you're doing based on what Jesus did and what he's requiring of you and I. It's so easy to look at somebody, oh, I, I give more than they give. I do more than they do. I'm here more than they are. And no, no. You just lost it. You, you, you've gone down a street that you don't need to be on because that's, that's a street called nowhere. <laughs> it ain't going nowhere. I want to be on the street where I know the Lord is. I want to be on the street where I know the Lord is blessing me, guiding and directing me. I want to be in a place that, Lord, let thy will be done. And who? Me. And as your will is being done in me, guess what's going to happen, my brothers and my sisters? Guess what's going to happen, my brothers and my sisters? He says at the end of verse 17, you are blessed if you do them. You are blessed if you do them. I've showed you. I've said it. I did it. And I want you to understand that if you understand what I said and you do it, you're going to be what? Blessed. The outcome is that God wants to bless his people. But can his people truly stand for God to bless them? My brothers and sisters, this is the purpose in step two. I ask you to read through verse 21, 20, I should say, because what we're going to do is next week, we're going to come and chew on 18 to 20, which pretty much brings us to a conclusion for this piece. But, but what I want us to see from all of this that we're looking at, I don't want you to do anything other than look at you. Look at you and ask yourself this question. What does God see when he sees me? Does he see someone who is faithful to their calling? Does he see someone who is constantly apprehensive, questioning, making excuses for why they can and can't do things and always stuck. You have to look at yourself and see you and just ask God to let him show you how he sees you and show me how I can be a better me because I have already been through the transformation and I'm going to continue to walk by faith. I want to be a person of action. Because I know I've been baptized, I've been cleansed, I've been washed, and I know I've been accepted. No matter how others think I am unworthy, I am accepted. And God accepted me just the way I am. But if I look at where I was when I first came to the Lord, I look at where I am now, that's letting me know that I've been through my transformation. And how does that happen? Because I walk by faith. And that's what ministry is all about. Letting Jesus be our example. Letting Jesus be the one who's guiding and leading us in all that we do. Let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank and praise your holy name. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for this time you've blessed us with. We thank you for how our lives have been made richer spiritually because we spent this time with you. 
So continue to move in us. Bless us, keep us, guide us, and direct us as we make ourselves available to your will and your way and allow us to remember the mandate we have here at Broad Rock that, Lord, we teach one in order to reach one. So let us not hold back, but let us let go all that you've given us because you've poured so much into us. So, Lord, let us pour it into others. And the more that we pour out, Lord, you start to increase the size of our vase so that we can take in more, so that we can pour that much more out. So we're thanking you for who you are, what you've done. We're thanking you, Lord, for meeting us where we are, not to beat us up, but to show us how we can become and do great things. We love you and thank you in the mighty, matchless name of Jesus Christ, our blessed in holy Savior name, we pray. And all God's people said amen, 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 amen. and amen. My amen. brothers and my sisters, God has been mighty good to us. And I just encourage you to continue to do what God is calling you to do. Yes, you're going to hit some road roadblocks along the way, but that's all right. God's going to take care of that. You're going to hit some bumps along the road, but that's all right, too. There might be a few potholes. They're going to have you go around, but continue to allow the Lord to have his way. We're two minutes before 1230, and for those who are in the Richmond area, we're just saying to you, if you know somebody who needs food, needs clothes, pack them up in your car and bring them here as quickly as possible, because I want you to know the stuff goes fast. We normally have lines, so the sooner you get here, the better you will be able to have an opportunity to get the food and the clothing that some folk may need. So I just say to you right now, my brothers and my sisters, continue to walk in your blessings. And I'll see you next Wednesday. I love you. And you can do a thing about it. Peace.